Morning, folks. Afternoon, evening. It is Tuesday, the 7th of February, and a slightly different news video because there's only one story, and that's the fallout of the Jesse Marsh sacking yesterday. And um, we were going to talk about it. So, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a few bits and pieces. We're also going to review the Michael Scubala press conference, which is the quickest press conference in Leeds history. And um, we'll do that at the back end of this if you're not interested in that. But we're going to start talking about this. And the big piece to get into here is on the back of Jesse sacking yesterday, the amount of names and specifically the styles of play that the managers have been linked with leads are looking at how they play. So we're looking at this and the, the current set of favorites that have been linked with the leads job are Carlos Corbran. Uh, I'll read these off. Andoni, Iriola, Marcelo Bielsa, Maurizio Pochettino, even Juric, Ang Postacoglu, and Nuro, Nuno Espirito Santi, as well as Marcelo Bielsa, which I think I already mentioned Marcelo Bielsa. Yeah. Uh, Bielsa will come up a lot on this. Just bear with me. I know we need to move past Bielsa, but bear with me because there's, there's a lot of likenesses and similarities here. So we, we, we'll talk about it. Um, According to multiple multiple places today, the decision makers on this will be Parag Marate and possibly Victor Orta. And um, it appears that Rajasani's opinion on this is obviously not going to be taken into consideration, considering the buyout of Leeds looks like it's going to go through towards between between Anton between now and the end of the season. So that's kind of been ruled out. So it looks like it's going to be Prague who's going to be making the, the bulk of the decisions on this, along with Victor. Um, and the two main candidates that I want to discuss um, are Andoni, as it's pronounced. Areola, and only Areola, um, who is currently the manager and head coach at Rayo Vacano. And also, I want to talk a little bit about Carlos Corbran as well. Then, two we're going to focus on, we'll talk a bit in brief about the others, but I want to keep this as short as we can. So, basically, according to Phil Hay, um, Areola is the leading candidate from his perspective. From Fabrizio Romano's perspective, it's Carlos Corbran. So, there's, there's two different stories coming out of the club here. Um, Basically, Phil has mentioned last night that the name of Ariola has been dropped. There's some obvious things there. He's a 40-year-old coach. He is coaching. He's a former Atletico Bilbao fullback who played for Bilbao under Marcelo Bielsa. Has experience there. Also spent some time in New York City um, in the Manchester City uh, family um, and was there to, around about the same time as Patrick Vieira was there as well. So he'll be in the pep model of coaching as well as Bielsa, who are very, very similar, let's be honest about it. Um, Asked about what his, sorry, if you look at what his style of play is, so he plays a couple of different systems. He's primarily, and he plays a 4-2-3-1 in possession and a 4-4-2 out of possession. His style is described as very high tempo, uh, high percentage football, uh, high press, fast, quick football. He doesn't play the man marking system specifically that Jesse Marcelo Bielsa played. He plays a variation on a, a hybrid man marking and zonal marking system. Um, he took over Real Valcano, who were in the second tier in Spain. He got them promoted into La Liga and um, have finished mid-table. And currently, they're in sixth position in La Liga. He also had a semi-final in the Cup as well. So he's done well to get them up, keep them up, respectable uh, respectable position. When you look at the possession stats, there is only pretty much there's only a handful of clubs who have more possession Dan Vallecano in La Liga, and they are Real Madrid, Valencia, Sociedad, and Barcelona. Um, so they're the only ones that have a higher percentage of possession. So he's big on possession. He mixes his head zonal and marking with his man marking. And the biggest difference with him apparently is that he doesn't do murder ball. Uh, I don't think most of Marcelo Bielsa's um, protégés kind of do murder ball anymore. I think it's just a him thing. Um, last night, he was asked about the possibility after his game about coming to Leeds, and he said, football belongs to the footballers. We are not important. So if you can hear Marcelo Bielsa's voice in that man's quotes. Um, it's an interesting one for me. I like the look of him. I like the style of play. His contract expires at Vallecano, uh, at Vallecano and in June of this year, which means that the basically the buying out of his contract would, would be very small for Leeds to do. They, they wouldn't have to pay much compensation, um, which is different with a few others. Uh, Nuno Espirito Santo has been linked. I don't think that's a real option. I think he struggled at clubs outside of Wolves. Um, also, when he was at Wolves, every player they bought was Portuguese. Literally, nearly exclusively, every player they bought was Portuguese. Um, when you look at even Juric, who's at Torino, he's also described as playing a very high-tempo, high-pressing, fast kind of possession game of football. Ang Postacoglu at Celtic does exactly the same. I love how Ang plays at Celtic. I watch a lot of Celtic football, obviously being an Irish person. Um, but... It's a very aggressive, high press, high tempo system. And they all have this in common. They all seem to be very, very similar to this as well. Um, and it's very much of what Irola plays at Vallecano. So it'd be a system that some of these players would be used to coming in. The newer ones, not so much, but we would have that structure 
um, around that we got from Bielsa without the issues that we had with the Bielsa system, which was the man marking system. I mean, bringing Marcelo Bielsa back now, you know, it's a nice thought and all that, but he will still man mark and it will still break down the Premier League. So, um, yeah, the best of both worlds on that. Moving on, then having a quick chat about Carlos Corboran, and um, he has been labelled by Fabrizio Romano as the front runner for the job, and. Um, he was the first name to come out of the club the night before the news was released that Jesse had been sacked. There are mixed reports whether Jesse was sacked on the morning of uh, Monday morning or whether he was sacked on Sunday night um, and then came into the ground on Monday to collect his stuff and say goodbyes and all that kind of thing. But the name of Corbrand came out from Romano and from the Daily Mail the night beforehand. So you would wonder if that's Leeds floating it, throwing it out to see what the reaction. The reaction has been mostly positive. There will be some people who don't want Carlos Corbrand. I get that. Um, and I understand the reasons why. And we'll get to that in a minute. But if you look at his style of play, it's very, very similar. It's high tempo, high pressing, potential uh, possession-based football, again, without the man-marking system. Um, his history, he coached at Leeds before Bielsa got to Leeds. He was the under-23 manager at Leeds. He was then brought into the senior setup with Bielsa and was there for a year before he moved on to explore management opportunities. He took over the Huddersfield job after they'd been relegated and were sitting in the bottom three of the championship. And he took them into the playoff final. They ultimately lost the playoff final. But to take them from that low down into that position is a hell of an achievement. Leeds fans will know well about how hard it is to get from the bottom half of that table in the championship into the top six. We did it for far too long. And um, he already knows Leeds. He knows the club. He knows the people. He knows the stadium. He knows the training ground. He knows everyone around the place. So he's not going to be overall by coming in. And um, he has a proven track record now of getting teams that are struggling to get him up the table very quickly. He had a spell at Olympiacos that didn't work out for him after Huddersfield. He spent uh, 11 games there. He won two and was ultimately fired. They don't stick with their managers particularly long there. And, um, so that's a blemish on his on his career. But then he took over West Brom, who, after Steve Bruce had them, they were in the bottom three, struggling. Um, and he has won 10 out of 13 matches and has them fifth in the championship now. And again, competing for for playoff positions as well. And I think he's averaging over two points per game, which is an incredible record. The big thing for me on Corbran is he has shown an ability to take underperforming sides and coach them to be better and to get them up the table. Leeds have a good bunch of players. It's a good squad there. A good coach coming in. Should be able to get a big tune out of them. So um, the arguments against Corbran fall a kind of, in a no man's land for me, it's but well, he doesn't have Premier League experience, so we shouldn't. Nobody has Premier League experience until they come to Premier League. He's been around England, it's, it's enough. I know the championship is not the Premier League, but he's been around it enough to know what's expected. He understands the expectation of Leeds fans. But if you go through that comment, if you follow the logic of he hasn't got Premier League experience, so we shouldn't have him, then you're looking at Bielsa didn't have it, Arsene Wenger didn't have it, Mourinho didn't have it, Klopp didn't have it, and the list goes on. These are managers had no Premier League experience before they came in. So it doesn't really apply. Same players as well. You wouldn't sign anybody if you worked off the, the premise of, well, they don't have any Premier League experience. you got to bring them in at some point. So for me, I personally, I would like Corboran. I wouldn't have an issue with um, Areola either. I think that's either of those two are a really good option. Uh, as I said, I like Ang Postacoglu as well. I, I, I just I like him. I don't think he's ready just yet. Another couple of years, maybe Celtic, and then maybe you could look at him. And even George is a really good option as well. But again, I think there's probably less to him than there is to Corbran and, and, and Ariola. Person, personally, I think Corbran's probably the front runner for this, and I'd be very happy to get him or or um, Ariola. So either of those two. So that's where we are with um, the management situation. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, it's going to be an interesting week. Leeds are hoping to have somebody in place by Sunday. So it's a lot of work to be done in a, lot, in a very short space of time. So... We're going to move on now, and we're going to have a quick chat about Michael Scubala's press conference and the Manchester United game on Wednesday night. Right, so uh, last 24 hours have been a bit mad. Um, so Scubala has done what I would describe as one of the quickest and shortest press conferences in Leeds history. There was no messing around, in and out in less than 10 minutes. So basically, he was asked about the last 24 hours, and he said he was brought in with um, after Jesse had been spoken to. They were brought in with a couple of the coaches, and basically they were asked to put together a plan for the next week so himself Gallardo and Chris Armis are kind of jointly doing this together he said and um, they are looking at putting the best team that they can on the pitch they were asked about what the tactical change would be and what they've said is and uh, they've only had one session today to kind of get some stuff in there will be some few tweaks but they can't move away completely from the game plan because 
of the amount of time they have to prep for this. They can't, you know, abandon everything, but there will be some tweaks, um, but that Leeds will be on the front foot and will be pressing to go and try and get three points. Um, on injuries, he said, look, usual long-term injuries out there. He says a couple of bumps and bruises, but outside of that, he gave nothing away about who's available and who's not available. Um, he was asked then about whether this is a pressure situation or exciting, and he said it's an exciting opportunity to go and coach anybody against a club the size of Manchester United and to be a club, involved with a club the size of Leeds as well. Um, he was asked about time frames on this, and he said that he hasn't been given any, that basically it's a case of get to this game and then we look at what happens after that. It's, it's day by day. Um, asked about the mood in the squad, he said that Jesse was a really good guy. He said, um, you know, there was a... They, they're they're uh, they're all used to change players. Man, just come and go. And he said, but the mood is okay. People are positive and they're they're working towards getting three points. So um, not going to be easy. He said he was asked about Bamford's comments after the game, which were kind of pretty telling. And what he said was that he just felt that Pat was talking from the heart, and there was no malice or, or any vindictiveness in it at all. It was just chant from the from the heart. And um, from a tactical perspective, he said to be competitive without the ball, they look to, to exploit um, weaknesses or, or, or weak areas in Manchester United's tactics. And he said, look, we're going to be on the front foot. And we're going to go out and try and win the game. He said that um, he did speak to Jesse before he left, as did most of the coaching staff, and, and said their goodbyes, and he handled it very professionally. Players' feedback is simple. Just get ready for the next game. Move on. Um, no indication on how, on how long he'll be in charge or beyond that. He has no indication of how long the process of getting a new manager in is going to be. He was asked about that. Um, he was asked if any anyone in football advice. He said he's got lots of nice messages from people. And um, was asked specifically about his, his his association with Gareth Southgate because he worked with him. Was asked will he be calling him for advice? It was just a weird, weird question. And he said no, no, I won't be. But he said he's had lots of people that have offered support. And um, asked about the situation between himself and Chris Armis. He said Chris and Ewan Sharp were both at Manchester United as well, and that they will be they have added some insight into the players and the playing mentality of those players going into this game tomorrow night. Um, but said outside of that, the coaching setup has all changed there. So it's it's pretty much going to be Leeds need to do what they need to do to try and go and get three points. So um, it's going to be an interesting one. The week is going to be interesting. You've got Man United on Wednesday, you've got Man United on Sunday, and then we've got Everton and Southampton. So a big couple of weeks ahead and Leeds need to sort some stuff out. It's not out of the realms of possibility that Leeds go away and get something considering what's going on. It can be mad. I always think back to the Brian McDermott sacking and, and uh, going out and pummeling Huddersfield by five. So it can happen. It can, weird things have happened. So that's going to be pretty much it for today, folks. Very quick uh, version of what's going on. There's a lot out there. It'll get calmer and more detailed as we get towards the back end of the week. And um, I will be doing a live stream at the end of the week just to review the entire week's news and see where we are on Friday and get ready for the weekend's game as well again. So that's going to be it for me. And um, thanks for watching as always. And I will see you tomorrow for more Leeds news. See ya. Bye.